So apparently in woodworking, there are some people who think that the use of power tools is heresy. Well, you know what? That's not good enough for me. We're going full on demonic possession by introducing 3D printed templates into your woodworking workflow. So let's get started. So I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rock Robotics and the Tabletop Battlefield. And as you've seen here on this channel, the past few videos, I'm diving a little bit into woodworking because it's, well, frankly, it's a heck of a lot of fun. And I need to cut some joints for various boards. So what I'm doing is creating some 3D printed templates here that pair up with my cordless router. And I'm going to be using that to cut these joints. So let's dive over to Blender and get started with modeling up these templates. So in this 3D model I have here, this is roughly the basic idea of what I'm going for for the leg structure. My 2x4 is running this way, and then I have the 1x4 running this way. Now to figure out exactly where your template's going to be, that really depends on the size of the router bit you're going to be doing, and the size of your router's sub base. What you need to do is measure the distance from your router bit, the very far edge of it, where the widest point is, to the edge of your router's sub base. In my case, mine is about 1 and 5 eighths of an inch. That's close enough for me to work with. You know, if it's a little bit off, it's probably not the biggest deal. I mean, if you're within, you know, like less than on one thirty seconds of an inch, you're probably in pretty good shape. Given that, that means I want to place the bottom of my template one and five eighths of an inch below the bottom of the one by four, and also one and five eighths of an inch above the one by four. So I'm going to model that up right now, and we'll go from there. All right, so here's the two ends of my template. So what I need to do for the bottom part here, that's by the end of the 2x4, I want to model that so that it wraps around this corner and gives us a nice square edge to align at least this half of the template. So I've got this corner wrapped around. I'm going to do something very similar up here, but obviously there's no corner to wrap it around. I'm just going to bring this side down a little bit. Or I want to make sure that this line right here in both halves is below basically the bottom of the 1x4. Now I'm going to start cleaning these pieces up and make them more precisely aligned. So I'm going to join them together. And then I'm going to do my new favorite trick that, you know, someone a few videos ago showed me how to do in Blender, which is just freaking amazing. Seriously. Okay. So now to clean these things up, after I join them together, I want to align this edge so all the vertices are in the same exact plane. So I'm going to select them all. And I think what I want to do is align them along the x-axis. So S for scale, X for along the x-axis, 0. We'll scale those all to be exactly along the same point along the x-axis. So I'm going to jump back to side view. They're perfect. Now same kind of thing down here for the bottom pieces, but it's scale. Z and then zeros because you're scaling along the Z axis. Okay, now I need to build a way to connect the two halves of this jig together. So I'm going to model that up right now. Now let me see here. Let me do some quick math. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, if I were to make this as one piece, this is going to be too big for my 3D printer and it's close to 12 inches, so I don't know, maybe you have a 3D printer that can handle it, maybe not. So I'm going to have to print it in two pieces. So instead of merging these two things together as a single object, I'm going to build a bit of a, a jig for a jig kind of a thing. So there's going to be a key shape going on somewhere in here that's going to allow me to lock these two pieces together on the piece of wood. You'll see what I mean when I get this process all said and done with. So right now, it looks like I have one solid object here, which in an ideal world, if you had a big enough 3D printer, that's what you really want to do. But because this isn't an ideal world, let me jump into edit mode, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Actually go into edit mode, not caps lock. <laughs> so if I go ahead and select the vertice over here and do control L, you can see that there's basically a little bit of a key right here. If I were to move this guy up, you can see how it's two pieces, but they have an interlocking part right here. And that's going to let me align these two pieces together when they're actually on the final wood piece. 
All right, so now that even though I modeled them as one piece, I gotta separate them, export them in STL file, 3D print them up, and we can jump back in the basement and actually cut out these grooves for the one by fours. Here's what I always forget. I model these things to be a lot smaller than they should be printed at just because it makes Blender a little bit happier. <laughs> so in this particular case, whoops, that's I'm using Blender commands inside Kira. That's not gonna work well. Um, in this particular case, I model these things as one blender unit to be one inch, which is, of course, 25.4 times too small because by default, Cura sees one blender unit as one millimeter. So let me just, oh, I guess I could just scale them up in here and call that a day, right? There go, that looks more like what I've expected to be. Awesome, now let's print these things out in the proper orientation, which this is definitely not the proper orientation. This is, because they were actually designed to be printed without supports, because I'm actually pretty darn good at modeling things that don't need supports. <laughs> okay, now let's actually get these two halves printed up fairly quickly. I got the two halves in my 3D printed guide. I have my workpiece partially clamped down at the moment, now I'm going to take these guys, put them on the workpiece, clamp them down, and get ready for the router. So now the last step before cutting is to do a bit of a sanity check. Now the board that I'm trying to cut a slot for here is three and a half inches wide. There's one and five eighths of an inch on either side of the router bit to the edge of the router sub base. So if you add that all up, this distance here should be six and three quarters of an inch. Well, it looks like I got that right on target, so that's awesome. So let's get the router and start doing some cutting. So before I continue any further, this is another good time to do a bit of a sandy check to just confirm that the entire 3D printed jig is working the way it expected. Now from this point here to this point here, we should be looking at 3.5 inches, which is the width of the one by four that's gonna be going in here. And I think I might be a 1 16th of an inch too small, but you know what? That's not a bad thing. I'd rather be too small than too large because that type of error I can always accommodate using a chisel or something like that. Now, based on which way your router rotates, there is a correct way to cut this groove out. Due to the fact that this is the first time I was using the template, I wanted to make sure the measurements were correct, and that's why I cut out both sides first before I dove into the middle. But ideally, you want to cut it out from one side to the other based on how your router rotates. So with a little bit of cleanup, you've got a completed joint here. Now, is this the best way to do things? Of course not. So this can work, but if you want more evidence, this is really not the way to do it. Let me get my router back over here. This guy had a four amp hour battery in it. It was fully charged at the start. It's, oh man, it's now yelling at me fully charged. Okay, well, anyway, a moment ago, <laughs> when I got done working with this thing, the battery was saying it's only 75% charged. So. Mm, routers are lying to me. But yes, this does consume a lot of battery power. And I bet, give it a, if I run it again, it'll probably be showing 75% pretty quickly. So anyway, with that out of the way and an embarrassing end, thank you, router, you suck. <laughs> Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the tabletop battlefield, showing you how to basically tick people off with woodworking even more. So thank you guys all for watching and have a great week.